All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wednesday episode, the Wednesday big live episode, Crime Victims Fight Back. That is the title, or at least one, hopefully more, uh, Crime Victims Fighting Back in Crime Ridden New Orleans. We got a Duracoat Finish Firearm segment for you today. We got a Brownells Bullet Point segment for you today. And uh, we're also going to talk to our buddy Scott Hambrick today. We've got a uh, an interview with our friend Scott, so... It's going to be a good day, Tater. It's going to be a good day, Tater. All right. Uh, I got Zach in the studio with me. Jared is on the road. Aloha. So let's go ahead and get it started in here. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right. So in addition to all that stuff, we are going to be reminding you uh, what are we going to remind them, Zach? There's a lot of stuff to remind them about. There's a lot. There is so much stuff to remind them about. That Apparently, that Johnny Depp uh, trial is still going on. The the, the Amber Heard thing. The spousal abuse thing. Yeah, I, I, I was just going into Facebook to close out of the From, the preview, and down at the mm-hmm. bottom, you know, how there's all the suggestions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, the Amber Heard Johnny Depp thing is still go. I thought that was resolved like six months ago, or years ago. No, I didn't think it was. Well, yeah, maybe the last I heard about it was the the UK judge ruling that her that while what she said wasn't true, it was ostensibly true, so therefore he couldn't make her guilty. Oh wow! Or declare her guilty. That sounds like a thing that they would say in the UK. That does sound like a thing. It was a st- well, he well might have struck you. It was a just because it true. wasn't true doesn't mean it's a lie. That's that's liberal logic for you. And that's why Johnny Depp can't be Jack Sparrow anymore. The the feeling is. You know the the you know the the accusation is actually more important than the truth. The accusation is more important than the facts. Facts don't matter. And Zach, you know where that comes from? Uh, hashtag Me Too. No, straight out of the straight out of the Soviet Union. Oh yeah, straight out of the Gulag area uh, era of the Soviet Union, uh, where the the facts of the case don't actually matter. It's the accusation. That's what's important. If the you fact weren't guilty, you, you wouldn't have been accused. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you, you were guilty. You were you were charged. Someone, no one would have said that if it wasn't true. Your neighbor, your neighbor turned you in, and uh, you know they wouldn't have done that if it wasn't true. Now this this idea uh, that in you know the, where it's the Me Too movement or the you know. Uh, we have to silence this comedian because they're not towing the line or whatever. Uh, that all that's that is straight up Soviet gulag. You know the secret police are going to come take you away, uh, and once you've been arrested, then that's it. Once you've been arrested, once you've been charged, the facts become insignificant because the charge is more important than the facts. That's kind of what we, it's like in. We can't uh, let that go. That's kind of what it's like in Japan, where they have mm. like a nine. I think it's like a ninety-eight percent conviction rate. So in Japan, do they have the old English uh, guilty until you prove yourself innocent? Ah, uh, yeah, thing? pretty much. Because it's it's very much so that in Japan, it's like, well, you wouldn't have been arrested if you didn't do something wrong. So clearly, you did that's something right. Wrong. I mean, the, yeah. the state doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. The state, the state doesn't make mistakes. Yeah, so. let me look it up. Japan conviction rate, or Japanese conviction uh, rate. Well, uh, um, while you're doing that, I'm going to remind people that if you guys are live in the Discord, we do sometimes care what you have to say. <laughs> uh, we care what you have to say. So Zach will monitor the Discord comments. And if you have a, a pertinent question... If you have a pertinent question, then uh, Zach will monitor that and decide whether or not it is pertinent enough for you, uh, for your question to be asked publicly. How's that sound? And the answer is conviction rates in Japan exceed 99%. 
So basically the state does, they, they have the whole, we don't make mistakes and uh, you were arrested. So, yeah. and I think they have jury trials there. I think so, but there's, well, no, I think it's just a judge. But there's two uh, leading things that I'm seeing here. One is because Japanese judges can be penalized by personnel personnel office if they rule in ways the office dislikes. And then another, perhaps they face biased incentives to convict, which is one thing, which I would like Yakuza. And then another thing is prosecutors have a broad discretion to prosecute or not, taking into account many factors. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's not what we want to talk about today so much. Yeah. Uh, How do we get on this again? I don't know. You started it. Oh, the gulag thing. Oh, yeah, the gulag thing. Yeah. And the Johnny Depp thing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny Depp thing. Saying, so, yeah, well, she might have, just because she didn't tell the truth didn't mean she lied. Yep. Just because he didn't hit her doesn't mean that he's not an abuser. That's right. He still could be. You don't know. Women have to be believed. All women have the right to be believed. It's Except... Except when they accuse a Democrat of something, then we don't believe them anymore. Yeah, unless they're Winita Broderick, then we don't believe them. That's right. All right, uh, moving on. Let's do the Duracoat finished firearm of the week. All right, so now, you, you ever see a picture on the internet? No, I never have. Um, saw a picture this last week. I don't know when it was, a few days ago, whatever. And it was supposedly a polymer-framed Tech 9. Tech 9, Mac 10, uh, Uzi. Uh, in, in there, a rap, I think they're... If you say the name of a gun, Lil Uzi there, is a rapper. There, yes. there is a rapper. I think he's dead. Like, uh, well, probably, but it doesn't matter. So the 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 picture was no, of was a melted was like it was it looked like a you know when you when you use a bar of soap for a couple of weeks how it kind of looks you know yeah no shit. Uh, and it was supposed someone in the the question was it was supposed to have been from a internet or from a gun forum. Does anybody know where I can get another one? I sprayed Cerakote and put it in the oven at two hundred degrees, and it and it melted, right? And I thought, okay, a that's probably a troll, but it actually does bring up a good point. Every once in a while, a stupid comment brings up a good comment or a good point. There are uh, many things. Uh, that you cannot or you should not bake. Now, when folks buy these, not Duracoat, but the other products, right? There are other products that that are gun finishes, and they recommend or part of the, the instructions are, well, you have to bake it on, right? You spray it on, you, you preheat your, you know, whether you have an industrial or commercial oven or whether you're using your wife's oven um, in the kitchen, you know, preheated to 200 degrees or 250 degrees or whatever and leave it in there for one hour, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then it, it bakes it on and it gives you a super hard finish and it's fantastic and you're going to be super great, wonderful, everything, right? Many years ago, Oh, geez, it's got to be going on 20 years ago. I had a custom rifle built. I had an M40, uh, a Remington 700 built up to be uh, essentially an M40, uh, Marine Corps sniper style rifle. It was built to the specs. And I had an optic, and uh, I, it was good. The, the barrel and the action were going to be an olive drab green, a non-reflective OD green, right? And I asked the... Uh, uh, manufacturing the, the custom rifle maker if he would do the scope in the same color and he's like well I can't because you don't want to bake a scope and I was like you know you're you're right I don't want to take an expensive rifle scope and put it in an oven at 250 degrees for an hour I don't want to do that uh, or any or, or electronics or or polymers or anything so that brings us up to you know the, a great question 
people say, well, you talk about Duracoat all the time, but I don't want to put my scope in the oven, you know, and I don't want to put my fill in the blank, right? Whether it's a Trigicon, you know, an ACOG, or it's a, you know, a, a, a loophole, you know, high powered optic, or maybe it's a polymer something, a polymer stock, a polymer frame, or, you know, whatever. And what you guys need to understand, and I, I think this, this sometimes slips below the radar, because there are so many inferior products out there that require baking in order for the it's a set. And so the average person just assumes that's what you have to do. They're like, yeah, I went on this, you know, to this place and they said, yeah, you know, da, 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 spray it on or, you know, whatever. And then you bake it at 200 degrees for an hour. And, but I don't want to put a scope in a, or a Glock frame or a whatever. So that's the beauty, the beauty of the Duracoat product. Now we've mentioned this before. Can you, uh, use an industrial drying oven or commercial drying oven to speed up the curing of Duracoat? Yes, you can. Do you need to? Is that a requirement? No, it's not. So with Duracoat, you can put it on because you don't have to bake it. It air dries. Because it air dries, you don't have to put it in an oven and you can put it on optics, you put it on scopes, you can put it on polymer, uh, you can, you know, things, anything you wouldn't want to put in an oven, you can put Duracoat on. So I, I wanted to mention that because I saw that co the comment, and like I said, it might have been a troll or whatever with the with the melted polymer frame that supposedly was Cerakoted and put in an oven at 200 degrees for an hour or whatever. Uh, I didn't see anyone in the thread. It was a Facebook post. I didn't see anyone in the thread say, you know, if you use Duraco, you wouldn't have to bake it. You just air dry it. I didn't see that one time. People were like, oh, well, yeah, that's dumb. Or, or you know, you should have known better. Or, you know, blah, blah, or send it away to a professional or whatever. Not one person said, you know, just Duraco that thing and let it air dry and, and don't worry about it anymore what that's crazy talk how do you and this is uh people say how did you get all this knowledge in your brain paul well one of the ways besides through years of experience uh, is i went to the duracoat university i went to duracoat university and you can too now thanks to their online distance learning program you can uh, click on the link that's in the show notes and it'll take you to Duracoat University. You can sign up and you can become a professional. You can become a professional Duracoder and put some Republic credits in your pocket. Mm. Be the envy of, of all, your, uh, of all your, your friends and neighbors and so forth. So you can do that and you should do that. And I hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode. Uh, if you missed it somehow, if you missed last week's public uh, episode, we we put in an interview with the late, great Steve Lauer, the founder of Duracoat. Uh, and so if you missed that, go back and listen to it. All right. So that was the Duracoat uh, Finish Firearms segment for you this week. Remember, with Duracoat, you don't have to put it in an oven. You You can if that's really what makes you happy, but you don't need to. All right, SDS Imports giveaway. It is still April, as far as I know. Let me tell you, I'm going to admit something to you, Zach. Uh, admit it to me. When I woke up this morning, it was cloud. It was cloudy. I woke up. It was kind of one of those things like the sun's really not coming through. It's cloudy. It's cold, messy. I thought it was Sunday. <laughs> I was laying in bed thinking it was Sunday, and it, it's not. But uh, it is April, and you have 18 days, 14 hours, and 26 minutes to sign up at SOTGGiveaway.com, and you could win the 1911 U.S. Army 9mm. That's right. It's a GI 1911, only it's chambered in 9 mil from our friends at SDS Imports. You want this gun. Yes, you do. You know you do. So sign up. 
right now. There you go. Oh, uh, what else do I have to say? I don't know if I have much else to say. Uh, we've got. Uh, oh, the other thing. Zach and I were talking about this the other day on the on the phone. How life just sneaks up on you. <laughs> And I was thinking, well, I still got about a month or, you know, five, six weeks before I have to decide whether or not I'm going to the NRA show. <laughs> mm. Not so much. Not so much. Uh, hold it. Hold it now. Hold it now. I'm holding it. This says that it's May 27th. NRA annual meeting, May 27th through the 29th, 2022. Oh! Were well, you looking at the dates for last year? Yeah. I, I thought it was April. Oh, so there's so still lots of time. Still have, you have over a month to decide if, you, if you're yeah. not going to go. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, you all right. Decide that you're not going to go. That's right, because, all right, we had this conversation. I, I got way too much stuff going on in my brain right now. But, uh, yeah, it's usually the very last weekend of April. Like 27, 28, 29, or, or 29, 30 in May 1st, or something like that. It's usually the last week of April. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got you. I got you. And you're like, Paul, you talked about this a month ago. I know. Yeah. I can't keep track of the, things. are just, there's so much going on right now. You, you don't yeah. even know. You, you guys don't even know. You don't even know. Real quick, let me um, check when those dates are 27 through the 29th. That is. It's, got, it's a Friday, Friday Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. Okay. Duh. So if we wanted yeah, to go, that's always no, the way it is. I know. I'm just, I'm just confirming because if we wanted to go, yeah. then I could go. Uh, I would yeah, we got, shipping. We got to figure out what's going on though yeah. in the world. And also, I'm assuming we wouldn't want to. We wouldn't want to fly, so we'd have to clear out no. an extra two days for driving. No, I'm not flying. Exactly. Yeah, that's what that's what slaves do. Yeah. And oh yeah. So he, uh, I was talking to. My girlfriend Sammy earlier, and she was talking about how I think it was last week or two weeks ago, her mm. niece was going on a trip, and she said that she was that her flight was delayed and she was stuck in the airport for thirty six hours. <laughs> and I told her that's the great thing about refusing to fly anymore. Yeah, is the phrase "I was stuck in an airport for thirty six hours" is not something or that's twelve be hours or even or ten hours or four hours even. Think about it. if you're if you were stuck in an airport for four hours, how far could you have driven in four hours? Most of the time, you could. You know, when, when you get up, you arrive at the airport ninety minutes early so you can get through security. And then you sit around and wait at your gate, and then you fly. Often, I know a lot of people that if if it's less than an eight hour drive, they won't fly because it. They, they, they said it'll take me eight hours worth of effort yeah. to get up, drive to the airport, be there early, check in, do the flight, finish flying, get my crap, go find a rental car, and rental cars. I don't want to get into that, but. Yeah, the, the, the this world has lost its mind. Uh, they, they've literally lost their minds, and I'm not going to participate in it. I'm not going to participate in the in the chicanery and and the art artery uh, of this world. If you guys want to participate in it, great. You say I have to fly though, Paul. You don't know what you're talking about. I have to. No, you don't. Yeah. Unless you're a slave or a prisoner or an indentured servant, you don't have to do anything. And the reason that the airlines refuse to fix themselves is because they know that they that you aren't going to do anything about it. Yeah. It's like a bully. You know, if every day the bully pushes you down and takes your money and you get up and then come back the next day and with a pocket full of lunch money and they push you down and take your money and it happens day after day after day, they know it. They're good. They're not going to stop doing it. Because it's easy, and you're not going to fight back. And there's no way, and that's the way, that is the, exactly the way American airports are run. Yeah. They treat you like a criminal. They treat, and they don't treat you like a customer. Mm -hmm. They treat you like they're doing you a favor. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you paid for the ticket, but we're actually doing you a favor by letting you fly on our planes. 
And if you don't do everything we say, the millisecond we say to do it, well, then we'll kick you off the plane or we won't let you fly in the plane or, or we'll make you sit over there in the corner for two hours while your plane is, you know, sitting on the tarmac or whatever. I will say these numbers are tempting, though, because it's a 22 hour drive and a two an hour and 45 minute flight. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. You do whatever you want. I'm not going to put uh, myself in a position either, where yeah. I'm a slave, where I'm a prisoner. Yeah. You know, how many times have they pulled out onto the tarmac and they're like, oh, we can't go anywhere. Um, Please wait three hours. We're waiting. So just sit in your seat. You're not allowed to get up. If you get up, we'll have the air marshals arrest you because we, we could we could be cleared for takeoff at any moment in time. So you can't get up. We can't wait for you to come out of the bathroom while we take off. So just sit in your seat, in your 18-inch seat. No. Yeah. Not doing it. Nope. Not doing it. And so if we it, wanted to, if we wanted to go to NRA, we'd probably have to leave Friday morning or Thursday. Period. What are you talking about? Friday morning. It starts Friday. Thursday morning. And then we'd get there halfway into it. Or we'd have to leave Wednesday. No, we'd have to leave Wednesday. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're not going to talk about that right now. We, we, we got just way more We got way more things to deal with. Uh, and one of the things we have to deal with is you being a new listener and you listening to this. But there's one thing that we didn't talk about yet. What's that? That's our beautiful, awesome friends at High Point Firearms. Oh, they're, they're going to be show Apparently... But the teaser is they're going to be showing off the the YC nine, the Yeet cannon at the uh, NRA in Houston. We'll see. <laughs> is, is that a new variation of the Yeet cannon? No, it's well, it's supposed to be the brand new one. It's supposed to be the the actual YC nine, the redesigned pistol. That didn't come out yet. I remember we were no. talking about that back in the old BRCC building. You know why? Why? Because the vid hit. Oh yeah. Because everybody, they, they couldn't know every manufacturer in the United States of guns and ammo could not keep up with current inventory, much less. So if you're a manufacturer, the reason you do new products is to get people excited about buying your stuff, right? And well, when you're selling everything you already have in stock and you're back ordered for a year, you don't release new products. Yeah, that makes sense. There's no point in it. You release new products when your sales are either flatlined or down. That's when you release new products is to get people excited. You don't release brand new products when you can't fill up, you know, when you're like out running out of product, whether it's guns or ammo or cars or whatever. So, yeah. So they they basically they're, they you know, they put that on hold. And everybody did. Every manufacturer did. Uh, I talked to manufacturers who had all had new products that they were going to release in in 2020, and then the the psycho you know wave hit, and they're like, "No, nah, we're just going to go ahead and hold off on that." Psycho wave isn't that a Street Fighter thing? Yes, exactly. And Bison. I have no idea. I think it is actually. Well, he has Psycho Crusher, so the Psycho Wave. All right, new listeners, listen up. Play. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. All right. Uh, what's more important, parts or guns? We got a question for the Brownells bullet points today. And it's brought to you by Brownells.com. All right. The question is, it's relatively simple. Viewing the the near future uh, of the United States, 
But I say, what's more important, guns or or gun parts? And you say, well, obviously, the guns initially, initially firearms are, because um, you can't really do much with a bag of gun parts. But what do you do when you own a fill in the blank, uh, a Glock, a Sig, a, a some kind of black rifle, an AR fifteen, an AK, or whatever? What do you do when that thing? breaks down or parts break and you say well parts don't break and guns don't break and and if it was a good gun it wouldn't break <laughs> that's like saying if it was a good car it would never break down good cars never break down really so you got one hundred eighty-seven thousand miles on your truck you never replaced the brakes well yeah i replaced the brakes what have you replaced the suspension or the? Sh- what? Well, yeah, I, you know, I had the suspension and the, and the brakes, and and I got a, I got a new starter put in it. But yeah, another one. That, it's like, well, that's the way machines are, man. <laughs> it's like as good as the machine is, um, you know, it, it's if it's got moving parts, uh, and you're going to use it, um, then you you might have to replace pieces. Now. Uh, one of the things that, that people will bring up is uh, bolt carriers and bolt carrier groups. Uh, in the AR-15 world, you can safely take a an AR-15 5.56 bolt and put it in a gun where it previously didn't exist. You cannot do that with AKs. Okay? If you talk to gunsmiths, if you talk to guys that build guns, you're like, no, nah, it doesn't make any sense. The AK is a cheap piece of Russian crap. <laughs> uh, uh, that doesn't make any sense at all. I was like, well, I don't know if there's any gunsmiths paying attention. Is Zach Hall in the uh, in the Discord or anything? Are there any gunsmiths in the Discord right now? But the uh, Zach Hall is not here at the moment. Okay. the The interesting thing about the AR. Uh, is it a perfect solution? No, but the the bolt on an AR was not fit and finished and polished and you know specifically made for that gun. It's kind of like Glocks, uh, Glocks or M and P's or whatever. You have the base components, the barrels, the slides, the frames, and so forth. Then you have boxes of parts. Like, like if you've ever, well, I, I've been to several uh, firearm manufacturing facilities and uh, these, you know, the polymer wonder nine striker fired guns, when they assemble them, they'll get a plastic box because there's actually humans that put these things together, right? They're not put together by robots. So the, a, a plastic box will slide over in front of them and it's got a slide, a frame and a barrel, right? And next to them on the on the table on the workbench is a box of recoil springs and a box of firing pins and a box of firing pin springs and a box of, you know, this is and that's and triggers and, you know, the trigger springs and, and all that. And they sit there and they put it all together. They assemble it, make make sure click, 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 it works, put it in a box, and then it goes to quality control and testing, and then it gets, you know, it it now is a gun. But those they don't sit there with a with a file uh, and sandpaper and jeweler's cloth, and they don't hand fit. The barrel in an M and P is not polished and hand fit into that slide. Uh, the The trigger is not. They don't take a, a a jeweler's stone and brush it and polish it. No, they're just taking parts and sticking them together. So that's good news for you. That's good news for you, because if you own those kind of guns, that means that, in effect, you could sit at your workbench and take a spare set of parts and replace any broken or worn parts. Now, yeah, you're going to use, you know, depending on what you're doing, you're going to need a tutorial, whether it's a YouTube video or whether it's one of the, uh, you know, the online gun videos or whatever. Um what are those guys that oh, I'm trying to think of the the name of the university? It's uh like Sand Hill SDS or SDI or is it SDI? What the online gunsmith university? 
online gunsmith school. I think it's SDI. Sororian De- it is. Institute. Sonoran Desert Institute. There you go. That's I knew my, my brain would help me out. SDI.edu. Yeah. Um, so either way, that's good news. The good news is if you have an AR-15, if you have a Glock, if you have an M&P, if you have a, you know, those firearms are relatively simple to change out worn or broken parts, uh, whether it's bolts, bolt carrier groups, you know, firing pins, hammers, hammer springs, whatever. Uh, they're, they're not that complex. Uh, if you watch a tutorial video or, or you, know, you can figure it out. I figured it out. I'm not that smart of a guy. I figured it out. You know, I've assembled, you know, innumerable AR-15 lower receivers and AK lower receivers. And when, when I say AK lowers, I mean, I put the, the trigger and the safety and the, you know, all that stuff into it. Um, you can too. I've done it with Glocks. I've completely disassembled a Glock down to the plastic frame. Uh, and and put all that stuff together. Um, it's not that hard. It's not that difficult. So that's where Brownells comes in. If you have those types of firearms, it's a great idea. Even if you never use, let's let's say you've got a thousand dollar, nine hundred ninety nine dollar AR fifteen of some brand or manufacturer. I don't know who made it, and uh, AR fifteen parts kit you go to ar15 parts kit at brownells.com and uh, there's a complete entire lower receiver kit at brownells for 57 dollars. right it's got all the springs uh, it's got the trigger the hammer the hammer spring it's got the it's got all that stuff for that's a that's a pretty good insurance policy right pretty good insurance policy uh, for something that's broken, because what's going to break on your AR? The barrel's not going to break. I mean, if the barrel breaks, yeah, you have really bad luck, and I don't know what to say to you. The things that are going to break on a machine are the moving parts, right? The things that are going to wear out on a machine are the moving parts, the springs and the levers and the stuff like that. The barrel's not going to wear out. Well, I mean, you might shoot it out, but... Um, the barrel's not going to break. The upper receiver's not going to break. The lower receiver's not going to break. Stock probably not going to break unless you're really brutal. The only things you're going to need to replace are the moving parts, the things that wear. Um, so if you were to get an AR-15 complete lower parts kit for 50 bucks, and you can buy them without the pistol grip because a lot of people are like, I don't need to buy the pistol grip. I just want the little pieces and parts and so forth. If you buy them without the pistol grip, they're less expensive. And then... You get a BCG, a uh, bolt carrier group, uh, get a spare bolt carrier group. Right now, Brownells has got a, uh, they've got them in stock. They've got several different kinds in stock. They've got the 9 millimeter. They've got the the 308. They have the 556. Five, uh, I actually have, in, in, a, in a box, I've got parts kits. I've got, and I also have a complete bolt carrier that doesn't have a gun wrapped around it right now. Uh, but if I had a gun go down, if a gun broke on me, if it went bad, um, I could probably figure out which part was worn or which part was broken and swap it out and get it going again. I'll give you all right, right now. I'm going to, I'm going to grab this link and I'm going to drop it into the show notes. So Brownells has an M16 bolt carrier group. Complete bolt carrier group. It's nickel boron on sale for 119 bucks. I think that's a good deal. I actually, I know that's a good deal. Uh, so my advice to you, uh, if you, as, as we go into the future, and we don't know what the future is going to hold in this world, uh, is it important to you to have, to keep your rifle up and running? Yes, no, maybe. Uh is it important to you to keep your, your Glock or your whatever up and running? If it is, you probably should have some spare parts for that thing. And wouldn't it be a better idea for you to be able to just switch out a broken part or a worn spring or whatever than to have to box that thing up and send it away? You know? Uh, 
it's not that difficult. Like I said, you can take classes, you can watch YouTube videos. Some YouTube videos are great. Some of them are horrible. That's the thing with YouTube. You just got to sort through to figure out, you know, which ones are good and which ones are ridiculous. Um, or, or where the guy, he, he has one angle of the camera and it's in shadow and he sits there and talks for 27 minutes about how to, you know, reassemble a bolt or whatever. I'm like, dude, I don't need to listen to you for 27 minutes to figure out how to reassemble a bolt. Sorry. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Oh, um, but there you go. That's the Brownells bullet points today. Is it more important to have parts or guns or both? Uh, and right now would probably be a great time for you to get that knowledge in your brain housing group. Um, so, Zach, do you have something to say? I see you're, you're reading lots of stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm doing all kinds of reading. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm engaging my brain in <laughs> stupid things. Pictures Were you cats. reading the Discord? Was there, are there Discord comments? Uh, I was reading pictures of cats. But uh, there is... <laughs> you're a retard. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, there's not really anybody uh, saying much in Discord. Oh, they've stopped, by the way. I just noticed they stopped. Who stopped? The thing. Oh, the noise. The oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I don't have anything to say other than go go over to brownells dot com, see what they got going. There you go. All right. Oh, um, now is a good time for me to be quiet and uh, Zach to remind you what's good at SOTG shop SOTG dot com. Shop SOTG dot com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, yeah, sir, I wasn't trying to wave at you. I was like, look, at the, the camera's lagging a bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but I will say... Speaking of shopsotg.com. We, we were actually just yeah, speaking of that. We were just speaking about that. We've got all kinds of new stuff. We're freaking wrapping up that wrapping up. But like, what's the phrase? Revving up. Revving up. Yeah, 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 we're yeah. revving up the store a lot lately. We've got the brand new Student of the Gun Instructor Development Manual, first edition, available right now on shopsotg.com. Have you guys heard about that? Have you seen that? Uh, Have you heard about this? No. Have you read about this? You haven't read about this? You don't know about this? I have. I actually have. I've oh, okay. heard about the the student of the gun de instructor development manual. Yes, indeed, it's freaking super cool book. Just came out. If you want to learn what it means to be an instructor and all that good stuff, there you go. There you we go. also still have the official SOTG bar classes available. Uh -huh. If you want one of those, they're super awesome. They're fancy. They're nice. They're and so far, just so everyone knows, I've shipped out a bunch of these. Nobody has said they've broken transit yet. All so, of them have arrived unbroken. Correct. So. so if you're worried about like, yeah, it looks nice, Knock but I'm, I'm, away, I'm afraid it'll get broken in transit, it will not probably. Prob the chances are good that it'll arrive in So time. far, we have there a 100% success rate in shipping these things, so don't worry about it. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the brand new, ever so fancy, Dad Rules Coffee Cup, if you want That's to get, right. that, get your hands on that. I believe, let me double check before I say things that are not true. It's not true. Never mind. But the point is, okay. you should absolutely still go get the official Dad Rules coffee mug off SOTG.com. Let remind your dad that he rules by giving him the new coffee mug. Yep, and I probably need to order you one of these because it yeah. will only be appropriate. Yeah, if you do, order me one that's an 11 ounce one. Yeah. Uh, I actually do, do want to. Are order we sold out of the stuff, guitar so. picks? Nope, we are not sold out of the guitar picks yet. We still have a couple left on hand. There's a few. Yeah. There are a few left. A few, a few left. Uh, officially, official student of the gun icon guitar picks. Yep, and uh, approved by one Matt Dorito, right? Question mark. That's right. Matt yep. Dorito said he said that is badass. That was his. That was his statement. His statement was that it was badass. It's very so, bad. There you go. And one last thing to over overload you. We still have the rip packs available. Those tooth cleaning powders starting to there get camping go. season. Looking for something to throw in your camping pack? Bingo, bingo, bongo. Good job. All right, Good I job. will stop shilling. That should actually; those should actually be on our our shelf for our prepper shelves. Those should be in your storm cabinet. I, you just said a great idea, Dad. Yeah. You know what? You, you we should do. You should do. Someone should do. You know how we have the Patriot bookshelf? We do. 
We should have the Patriot Storm Cabinet. It's a list of the, all the things that you you should have in case the power goes out. That's true. That's true. And then we can have links to all the stuff that we sell and all the stuff that we don't sell. We still have links to it because we're cool people like that. Mm-hmm. There you go. You've there been you banging go. out a bunch of content this week. Uh, <laughs> yep. There you go. Yeah, There's yeah. Something here's else to put on your plate. Here's something else because you don't have enough stuff to do. You don't. Uh, I, I kind of actually do. I but anyway, anyway, moving. Uh, on. I'm joking. Serious. I'm just joking. All right, it is time for a student of the gun homeroom brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters. Yes, indeed, that music was provided by Madison Rising. The song is called Dangerous. Uh, dangerous on demand and we do have 100 percent express written permission to use it so youtube can consume a satchel of richards now when you guys go to crossbreedholsters.com and you buy a reckoning holster or a super tuck deluxe or whatever or the rogue use the promotional code sotg you're going to save money you're going to get a good american made 100 percent made in america holster and you're going to save money so it's win 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 all right, we got a story from Fox 8 Live. Zach's going to help me out with this. Yes, he is. Uh, yes, Fox 8 Live, local first on your side. I'll read the title, and then Zach can read the description. Sure thing. For, real says, quick, do you want to play the video? Um, Sure. Can we? I can there's do whatever two, you want. There's two videos. There's I'm looking two at the one at the top. The top one. Yeah, go ahead. See what they have to say at Fox 8. Okay, well, that's playing, so go ahead and read the title. Fox 8. Video. Man rigs flashbang in truck after repeated break-ins in New Orleans. Nolens. New Orleans. N-O-L-A. Which is, which is also uh, synonymous with S-H-I-T. Yes, indeed. Is it a stupid ad over yet? Yes, indeed it is. I'm just setting right. this up real quick. This is allegedly the video from April of, 4th. From April yeah. 4th, yeah, of the video, uh, of the video, of the flashbang actually in action. So Yeah, but there's no sound, is there? Well, I mean, it still might look good either way. <laughs> All right. Cars pulling up to the truck. Guy with uh, the, okay. Uh, go all balaclava. Smash uh, okay. the window. So here's the deal. Uh, uh, Let's go ahead and just read. Boom. Since we're on radio. Ah. His face just exploded. It was great. Yeah. Well, that's why I was narrating it. Yeah. All right, Zach. Well, here's the thing. If you go read the story, Zach. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to tell people that they can watch a video version on studentofthegun.com or freaking on our things. But I guess that's not important. Anyway, New Orleans. Rashes. Rashes of car break-ins? Is that a word? Is that a verb? I guess. I've never heard rashes of anything. Anyway, yeah. rashes of car break-ins in New Orleans have has one man fed up and fighting back. Although he still has to replace his window, he came up with a deterrent that, that chased away the would-be thief Friday night, which is the video we just showed. Yeah. To see him, like, gleefully walk up and just smash my eighth window in the past month in the past couple months, and jump in, and then you know to see the destination go off and his reaction. The man described. So that's why I messed yeah. it up, is because because it's said a it's a really terrible quote. quote. It's yeah. like, hey, you know, like when stuff happens, and and like you know. So it wasn't my fault. I mean, yeah, his broken window stings a little less than the other six times this has happened over the last eight weeks. Didn't he say eighth w- w- window? Whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't want this guy to die for what he did by. But I don't want him Actually, to just be able to smash and grab it and run away, he said. Yeah. So Actually. This video shows the, sm- the window smashing thief triggers his loud, non-lethal triggered deterrent system in the center console of the truck. <laughs> Quote, he probably didn't get hurt that bad, but it wasn't pleasant, and it might deter him and his friends and tell other people not to do because without something like this, there was no consequence because they're not going to get arrested, he said. That's right. So, um... Go down to the next one where it's just churchgoers. This is where, where we really need to pump the brakes hard here. All righty. Churchgoers at 6th Baptist Church in the Lower Garden District had their cars broken into Sunday morning. 
So car swell. Yeah. So this is that's what I want to say. So this this is where New Orleans is. We we're like, well, I mean, you know, it's a city, and you know, it's late night, and you know, that's gonna happen. No, they're at the 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 criminals in New Orleans are so bold. They have become so emboldened that they'll break into a parking lot full of cars in a at a church on a Sunday morning. Citywide vehicle bur- burglaries are up twenty eight percent. In the central business district, they're up one hundred and sixteen percent. In the central business district, remember what we've said about crime stats. I've been saying this for years. Five when you're, percent's when, a lot. Yeah, if if you see an in a five percent increase in a in a certain crime statistic over a year, like last year there was X, this year it's Y, and and it's five six percent higher than it was last year. That is what the experts cause or call an area of concern or a cause for concern. Hundred and sixteen percent. Um, the guy, he said, my condos, this, go ahead and read that. My condos for sale. Uh, my condos for sale. My condos for sale. My condos for it's sale. under 116%. Okay, my condo is for sale. I don't want to live there anymore because I can't keep paying for windows. He said, it's almost like a culture now on a big night, whether it's something like the final four or, you know, a holiday weekend, something like that. You can almost expect it in my neighborhood. He says his truck is almost always targeted. He believes the thieves are going for guns they assume are in trucks because he has left valuables in the past and they have gone untouched. (sighs) Leadership has failed in more ways than one when it comes to this situation. Just like a just crime in the area, like I reported to the police almost every single time, and I don't blame police for this. They're understaffed and, and like there's too much crime. I really blame the fact that these these people get caught and they basically get bailed out. He said, whoever did this definitely had a bad night. He might never do it again because every time he goes in there, this could happen to him. It's a small mm. battle in the war, I guess, that no one else is fighting. Oh, uh, And then NOPD, the courageous, bold... The the oh the NOPD the bold and courageous and fearless spokesman, whoever this is said. Last so, sentence. Something rigged up to detonate can be considered a bomb and could be illegal. You know, I was just about to say, I'm surprised that this, that this story didn't end with the man is being charged for rigging the flashbang. But yeah, he might be. Yeah, it's, it could be. You know, you you, you know, can't hurt the criminals. Yeah, but it, nothing bad would happen if they didn't break into my car. That doesn't matter. You can't take the law into your own hands. Well, who's taking the law into their hands? Well, you know, here, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, and you should understand this by now, but I'm going to remind you, whether it's New Orleans or New York or san francisco or chicago or philadelphia or pretty much the whole state of new jersey or whatever if you live in a democrat run crime infested shite hole you have a choice well a well actually you don't have a choice i was gonna say stop voting for democrats but here's the deal it's the criminals are the ones electing the democrats the criminals and the criminal culture and the families of the criminals. I guarantee you that the families of these criminals all vote Democrat. So you can either fight back, you can leave, or you can just continue to be a victim. Those are the choices you have to make. Uh, unfortunately, if you live in a Democrat run crime infested shite hole, uh, at the end of the day, you'll probably, you, the citizen who fights back, you'll be the one punished. Because what we know is that Democrats are not interested in punishing criminals. We know this. How do you know that? History? 
their behavior. Uh, if you go to New Orleans, in this story, there's a, quote, crime tracker teen booked with killing four in two New Orleans shootings was accused of murder previously. Tyrone Steele, age 18, is accused of killing four people in two separate shootings. An 18-year-old. Woman, or family of woman, brutally murdered in mid-city carjacking, preparing to meet with DA's office. 73-year-old Linda Fricky was dragged to death uh, when her car was hijacked in New Orleans. Holy crap. Yep. Retrial date for Cardell Hayes, formerly convicted of killing Saints Will Smith. Not the Fresh Prince. There's a lot of Will Smiths in the world, apparently. Man formerly convicted of killing New Orleans Saints player Will Smith will head to trial for a second time this year. But but remember when uh, that happened and the coach of the New Orleans Saints came out and he's like, there's too many guns and we need more gun control in America. And this isn't going to end until there's more gun control. And we said, you are a piece of human garbage and it's not the guns it's the humans and when you allow these human monsters to continuously do this when you create a criminal culture which is what new orleans has a a criminal culture these people these criminals this Tyrone Steele and Cardell Hayes and the people that dragged this 73-year-old woman to death when they carjacked her, they don't live alone on an island somewhere. There isn't like a, a super secret hideout where all these criminals hang out. They live in the community. And they grandmas and they grandpas and they mamas and they cousins, they all know who they are. They all know that they're criminals. And they provide them with shelter and support and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, New Orleans is not going to change until the culture changes. And right now you have a Democrat culture that allows it and fosters it, just like Chicago. And if you don't like that, go fornicate yourself. It's true. And no matter what gun laws or restrictions they pass or how many innocent citizens they, uh, you know, they punish. I, I like how the, the, there, there are people in our, our audience who are experienced um, humans and, and they watch that video and they're like, uh, that wasn't a flashbang. Because an actual flashbang, a real, like, handheld flashbang would have blown every window out of that truck. Oh, uh, like the, the kind that you, that the SWAT team throws into the room when, when they're going to come in and stuff. <laughs> the kind of, that, that our, our boys used over in Afghanistan and Iraq when they were going to go into a building. Um, yeah, an actual flashbang. What he probably had, Zach, was he probably had one of those, those barrel arm things. Oh, yeah. I, I was going to say like a firework, but yeah, barrel arm too. Yeah, the barrel of one of those barrel arm things. Oh, that's probably what he had. So, and it worked. And I'm going to tell you, and we, we talked about this uh, previously, about how if you have one of those uh, bear alarms and you get the the OC pepper spray shells and you put that in the bear alarm, uh, in addition to making a really loud noise, it will fire about an ounce of enough orange pepper into the whatever that's right you're like yeah but then it'll be in my car man and then, uh, i don't want that and yeah. Like, well, you know, yeah that's true but that 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 person that person breaking into your car will will uh definitely 
definitely remember that. Now, I, I don't want to be, and I'm going to go ahead and finish it up here in a second, but I don't, I don't want to be, you know, Mr. Um, I don't know, pouring cold water on this, but here's the deal. If you think this is going to reduce crime, it's not. Eh, I mean, because he can, these, he can scu- these scumbags know that what just what that 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 happening to them will probably it, it's it's a tiny infinitesimal especially, and there are so there, and there are so many of them especially if this guy gets arrested for having an illegal bomb in his car yeah then he and, knows yeah. That, then they know definitely when, when, and when again. when nopd puts a statement out that says first of all they should have said nothing or they should have said we're sorry that crime is rampant and we're doing nothing about it. Oh, uh, like, what are we supposed to do? I don't know. Nothing. I, I guess the answer is nothing. Um, my, my question to the people of New Orleans who live in the city of New Orleans. Oh, uh, are you still paying taxes for police protection? Yeah, why? My answer is why? You could you could hire like Pinkerton for half the price is all they're doing is they're coming to your house and they're taking a statement. They're like, yeah, OK, they're writing it down. They're like, OK, cool. Thank you. All right. Cool. Thanks. Bye. And they take that piece of paper and they go to an office somewhere or they sit down at a computer and they enter it. Shh, ding. There's another break in. Ding. Well, we're going to find these people in a restaurant, right? No, no, we're not. Gonna, we don't do that. We come and we take the report and then we go back and we enter the report into the computer. And then. And then no. And then no. And then there's no there's no. And then it's just that that's it. That's the end of the conversation. Well, no, the and then is then the next day we go out. And we take more reports about car break-ins, and then we enter them into the we enter them into the computer, and then and then and then, then the next day, and we do it all over again. But there's there's no arresting, convicting, getting these criminals like all off the, the streets. Yeah. yeah, no, that doesn't happen. So r- real quick, and I. I forgot we had the Scott Hambrick interview. We're almost an hour in already. Okay. So, uh, cat in the hat, and that be that. um, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, it's up to you. It's up to you. And eventually, I don't know if the people in these Democrat-run shite holes are going to get the clue. Keep voting for Democrats. And this is what you get. Sorry. Not sorry. I don't feel bad for the people of New Orleans. Oh, come on, man. You need to feel bad for them. Why? New, the hurricane, the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina did one thing positive. Well, There's a couple positive things, but one of the positive things that came out was in the aftermath, the whole country was able to see the rampant and blatant corruption of the city, the parish, the state, the cor- the political corruption of Ray Nagan and the 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 New Orleans City Council and the mayor's office, the pair the corruption was there for everyone to see. There are Democrats, they're criminals, they're corrupt. They took all that money. And they put it in their own pockets. Actually, they funneled it to their cronies. And then their cronies put it back into their pockets. And it was obvious. I think Nagan's still in prison for, for embezzlement or corruption or whatever. And they, but the people of that New Orleans didn't learn. They didn't say, you know what? We should probably stop putting Democrats in office. That would be a start. Nope. They had a good governor for four years. And then they forgot. Now they have a criminal governor. They got a Democrat governor again. 
don't feel bad for them. They created this problem. And they're they're having to deal with the actions or the consequences of their actions. So there you go. All right. The next voices that you hear are going to be mine and Jared's and our good buddy, Scott Hambrick. So enjoy. Hello and welcome to Student of the Gun Radio. I'm your host, <laughs> Rusty Sharp. No, yeah. All right. Who knows who Rusty Sharp was? Raise your hand if you know who Rusty Sharp was. Was the inventor of tetanus? Rusty Sharp the was. The inventor of tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> good job. That's pretty good. Good job. Rusty Sharp was Rush Limbaugh's first DJ name. Oh, I did not when know When he that. was an FM DJ. Because, you know, FM DJs got to come up with cool stuff like, you know, Randy Knight and Rusty Sharp. And, and actually, he pulled oh. Rusty from the fact that when he was a little kid, his nickname, because his father was named Rush and his grandfather was Rush Limbaugh the first. Mm -hmm. So they called him Rusty. That was his nickname as a kid. Huh. Well, so there you know a little bit a little bit of radio trivia for you young Gen Z people who don't know. So, what and was even the guy, you millennial people. What was the guy from ninety seven nine CPR Rocks? What was his name again? Special K? Yeah, the there was Special that K a, that ended up working gonna, at Dick's Sporting Dr. Games. Johnny Fever. No. Uh, we just lost Dr. Johnny Fever, man. I tell you what, I used to when I was a teenager, I don't know, I was probably twelve, thirteen years old, I wanted to be Dr. Johnny Fever. I wanted to be that cool FM DJ spinning the discs. You almost made it, man. I almost, I was so close. I was so close. So oh, Howard Hessman, man. You guys and people out there are like, what? I thought this was a student of the gun radio. It is. Well, we're talking about radio. Calm down, you weirdos. We got Scott Hambrick with us again and Jared and Zach and I guess, should we play music or is that something that's going to happen in the future, Zach? Scott Fox is the is the name I was looking for, by the way. Scott, Scott Fox. Fox. Scott Fox and the Scott Fox Super Show. Yeah. So, Jared, I was watching the, the intro video there and that's lightweight, baby. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot that was in there. I need to update that sucker. Yeah, that's lightweight, baby. That's old yeah. school there. That was only what, like 500 pounds? Yeah, that was the first 500 pull. Yeah. I can fix up the intro video. We got you a couple a, that, things anyway. That's so. in the rear view. 500 is lightweight, baby. Yeah. 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 I'm doing, so this week I'll do one more attempt at, uh, uh, it'll be 585. One more attempt at that. And um, then I'm transitioning over to my body composition goals because I'm going to get a two pack for summer. I'm telling you. A two pack, huh? For sure. Yeah, like the the rapper. You need a two pack for sure. All yeah. right. Well, there you go. No, I, I've talked with the my coach, and I decided that Julian? winter is going to be my strength path, and then spring summertime will be more towards trimming off the fat and whatnot. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to see how it goes, and I will report back to you guys on how it goes. Yeah, you're there getting you old. Go. You need to tend to that because it's going to get harder. Yep. <laughs> Yo, you kids, really? You kids, you telling me that? Is that true? Uh, I think I, I turned off my notifications. I think I've gotten it. I've, I, I unchecked every single box, so hopefully we won't get any more of those. Yeah. No, I, I, if we hear I another Badoop, we'll just blame it on you. Badoop! Oh, I, asked, I just hit a, a, a PR, a press PR goal, a volume PR. Volume PRs don't seem as cool as singles PRs, you know, but to the person who's doing them, <laughs> <They're> real <laughs> yeah to the person who's you know when you when you tell people yet like like my wife bless her when when she first started way back when having a spot for me at the house there and i'd call her into the to, and i'd be like doing a 195 bench or something like that and you know three by five 195 and she's like why don't you just do them all and then be done with it why don't you shut your mouth <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just do all 15 and then not have to worry about it? I'm like, that's not how that, that's the old lady on the wall with the picture. That's not how that works. That's not how any of this works. No. Working towards that. Yeah. If I could just lay down and, and do 195 15 times in a row, 
I would, I'd be doing more than 195. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, so like, I don't know why you have to keep stopping. Why do you wait so long? No, just, just, just do them all. Like I like spending time with you, honey. Tell her that. Just do them all and get finished. Well, you know what she does? She can't stand there for five minutes while I recover. She walks away. <laughs> and then, and then she, she, gets in, she, she gets involved in something. A long time ago. Yeah, she gets involved with something. I'm like, hey, it's been five minutes. Really? Has it been five minutes already? Yes. I'm laying here on the bench with my hand wraps on, and I'm like, okay, let's go. But, yeah, no, I, I did a... I did a, a press P, a volume PR. So I don't know how the me, the metrics translate. You, you do, Scott. You're a coach. So if, if you've got someone doing, you can pretty much figure like, all right, if you're doing sets of, like say you're on the bench and you're doing sets of 200, you're doing 200 for your sets. You, do you, you have the, the formula for what you figure that person can do as a single PR? Yeah, if somebody does a, a max effort set of five, in general, they're probably worth 15, 16, 17% more for a single. Mm. Um, the more female or the more old they are, the closer their one rep will be to their five rep. Mm. So, you know, for an, an, an elderly lady, um, you know, she might, she might press 50 pounds for five. And, and, you know, do her pants, like full effort, terrible. And then her one rep PR might be 54, 55 pounds. Mm. Uh, but a very, very strong, like division one young man, you know, might squat, might, might, might get, you know, 17, 18% more than their set, than their set of five. Uh, yeah, it's really, it's really odd. It's really odd how, uh, older folks and ladies in particular can do. Uh, you know, they can do a max single and then a day later you can take 5% off of there and they can do it for five. <laughs> it's crazy. But, but yeah, they, uh, 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 well just have less fast twitch mus muscle fiber, you know? So the, you know, the, their one rep PR is comprised of slow twitch, you know, uh, effort more, more than the explosive 44 inch vertical leap division one asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sons of bitches yeah, so, so he can do that you know he can do that max effort squat at 18 percent over his five for one it's all fast twitch right he comes he explodes out of the hole locks it out puts it in the rack he doesn't have a second one that fast twitch is gone like mm. it's smoked you know he could wait 10 minutes and come back and mike could get another one uh, but yeah he's relying on that fast twitch. I, I experienced that when uh i failed what was it like a month, month and a half ago. Yeah, it was right before you guys left after Ellie was born, Dad. Mm -hmm. When I I tried to pull the really heavy PR, and it didn't it didn't go. I got a little bit off the ground. And, well, actually, I got it up to my knees, which is pretty far off the ground. Couldn't get it any further. I sat down and I waited a good ten, maybe even fifteen minutes, and I went back to try to pull it again, and it, I don't even think it came off the ground. It's like, no, yeah. I guess I'm getting too old to redo that. <laughs> no, yeah. you're too young to redo that. Yeah, that's it. You're too young to read, really. Um, yeah, that fat, that fast twitch muscle fiber. You know, the the more talented the lifter is, we shouldn't say talented. The more genetically gifted the lifter is, uh, the more fast twitch muscle fiber they have. And if you watch, if you go to meets and coach people in meets, or you just go and watch a lot of reps, you'll see that the really talented, really strong, really explosive, genetically gifted people can't grind. Like they'll either they'll either take that squat down in the hole and explode out and lock it out or not, and then you'll see a master's lifter, a guy who's an amateur, and he's fifty eight years old, and he'll squat three seventy, which is his all time record, which is darned heavy, you know, but it ain't Division One explosive guy heavy, right? Yeah, and he'll get down in the hole, takes him seven seconds to stand up, like just grind and grind because it's not fast switch muscle fiber that they're relying on you know oh yeah i've 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 learned it's amazing and, and i know we're talking about strength but you people need to get strong so just shut up and listen uh i, I have really tremendous that if it's one thing i've learned it's my body and my ability to grind and, and i you know i was talking to nancy and she was spotting me for uh 
a bench and she, you know, it was the last set of three or last set of five or something like that. And the last one, you know how when you're under it and it feels like you push it for 30 seconds, then you watch the video and it was only actually three or four. <laughs> you're like, man, that's like, but the, and I told her, I said, five years ago, when I hit that point, I would have just let it go and said, grab the bar. Yeah. But now I know that I have it in me. I, I can tell and I know how to push through it. I know how to push through that, the mental failure, because everybody's got that. You get that it, when, when you reach that weird spot where you realize that, that you think you're going to fail. And the natural tendency for people is like, oh, it's too heavy now. Rack it. It's just too heavy. Yeah, if you're doing some sort of work and it's super, super heavy, you're like, oh, wait a minute. I want to put this down and go get a help. <laughs> and yeah. I, and me, me and my buddy will pick this up. But, yeah, it takes some work and to, to, to learn how to do those grinders. You know, I'm not explosive. Uh, I got like a 18-inch vertical leap. And, uh, uh, you know, my, my one rep max is, you know, or take eight. You know, I, I, my, my, my deadlift PRs take eight, eight Mississippi to lock out. You know, there is just torture. Ooh, that's so long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a, there's a video of me pulling 505 on the internet somewhere. And it just, it just, it's like a, it's like an ACDC song long. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's in slow motion. Uh, that's funny. You're like, yeah. is this, like, is this stop motion or what is <laughs> like, yep. like a dog? <laughs> 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 Amazing. Ah. <laughs> But that, you know, that's the difference. And you know, for those of you that, that you're like, well, you know, I, I've been in the gym, in and out of the gym my whole life, and I don't need coaching, and I don't need these programs. I know what to do. Like, no, you don't, actually. You, yeah. you don't. You, you need somebody to tell you. Like, for instance, the grind thing. Like, I, what, what is the, the key, the cue? Five seconds? Before, five you, seconds. before you give up, I want you to pull on that or push on that for five seconds before you give up. Like your baby's under the car. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, those heavy reps are like a time machine. Like you'll think it's five seconds. You put it down, you watch the video and it was one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 It's, it, it takes a lot of effort and, you know, and push and push on, push on those failed reps. You know, if you're going for a bench press attempt and you got your safeties there, uh, and you've disciplined your spotter, the spotter's not going to grab the bar until it heads back down. Mm hmm you know, push that thing. Your elbow is going to be at a right angle, right? You're halfway up and you don't think it's going to move. You might be right. It doesn't matter. Push on it. Your, your, your muscles are still getting the work. It's still effective training stress. It's still beneficial to you. So push on that damn thing. Uh, every now and then you'll lock one out and be surprised and pleased with yourself, but otherwise you'll get good training stress off of it. You know, a uh, four reps plus a six second bench press grinder, might actually be better than five complete reps in terms of training stress, you know? Oh, and it's like an overhead press. When you reach that and you, and you get there and you're like, okay, and, and the, the devil says just rack it. And if you push, and every once in a while, you, you push through and it's just that inch or two and you get over your head. And that's why I'm not allowed in Planet Fitness or any place <laughs> anymore because I scream. Like when I lock that one out, yeah. I yell. I we yell a, obscenities. We have a hype lifter in the midst. I, I yell F yeah and, and F you gravity and stuff like that. And and Nancy's learned not to run out into the garage when I when she hears me screaming. You know. I said unless you unless you hear the sound of steel smashing against the floor or something, it, it's okay. There's screams of ecstasy, honey. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Somebody told me. Did, Did they put want, squat racks in, in Planet Fitnesses? Surely not. Because somebody told me, they're like, oh, I'd get my workout done. At, and there's a local Planet Fitness, and I can do it all day long. And I was like, did yeah, they I'll start putting squat that. racks in and there? Probably a Smith machine. Totally different. <laughs> not the same benefits. Squat racks make fat people feel bad. We can't have them at Planet Fitness. That's right. You can't drop weights. You, you know. Oh, I, I got one, Scott. Somebody, a, 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 a an RIA said uh if if you can't if you're deadlifting and you you can't slowly set it down on the mat 
without making noise, then you're you're lifting too much weight. It's like, hmm. really? Okay. That's good. Is that the case? Wow. I want that guy to lift. You should be a professional coach. Yeah, you should be a professional coach. Just to confirm, is, I want is, that guy to lift that way. That's good. Yep. Is the Smith the machine the thing with the hydraulic bars? Yeah, it, it doesn't have the, hydraulic bars, but it's but got the a thing. guide bar. Yeah. yeah. A, okay. Yeah. That, that's what they have. That's what they have. Yeah. My my dear friend Matt Reynolds, his cousin was bench pressing in a Smith machine uh, alone at night one night, and bench pressing in the Smith machine. The bar is mounted on these guide rails to supposedly keep the they keep it under control and help you keep it over your midfoot or whatever. And he was bench pressing in a Smith machine, and the, one of the consequences of it being the bar mounting on those rails is that if you uh, if you fail a rep, you can't dump the plates off of the bar. Like, right. you know, if you go to the gym and you see a guy dump the bench press, everybody, you know, laughs and points like he dropped his tray in the lunch room, but right. it's, it's okay. Dump your, dump the damn plates off. That's okay. Yeah. So we never, we never call her to the bar when we're doing the bench press. We always had the plates loose on the bar. So, uh, Matt's cousin was bench pressing in a Smith machine and, uh, couldn't get it off of him and it killed him. Yeah. You know, they found, him, so they found him, they found him the next day pinned under that thing, like a mouse in a trap. You know, Smith machines are a bad scene. Don't don't use them. And it's hard to get strong, even if it doesn't kill you. Uh, it makes it harder for you to get strong and get jacked. So don't use them. Stupid. There are some things that won't kill you, but also won't make you stronger. Right. Oh, then I just I just googled Smith machine. The number one video is Planet Fitness: How to do squats in our Smith machines. Yeah. You're so yeah. gay. <laughs> and the Smith machine, um, because you it, because it's on the guide rail, you can't walk the bar in and out of the hooks. So they typically you typically have to twist the bar uh, to move these hooks in and you know and and then get out from under the bar. Mm-hmm. And if I've got a heavy bar on my back, the last thing I want to do is twist it. Uh, the Smith yeah. machine is an abomination before God. Well, and, and you you also don't learn, you know, part of the part of the the exercise, part of the strength is is dealing with gravity and balance mm-hmm. you know that's part of it i used to think that the it's probably my young naivete i used to think that any any kind of exercise or working out was better than no kind because it got the people up and motivated and i guess you maybe could argue that but the more I, the, the older i get the more i train the more i realize that if you're spending your time, you could spend that same amount of time and get way more benefit. So if if indeed you are choosing to waste your time because you're either ignorant, you don't know what to do because you've been coached by people that also don't know what to do, th- it doesn't matter why you're doing the thing, why you're wasting the time. The fact is that the time is being wasted and it could be better spent gaining more, getting more gains for yourself than if you just did something now we know that there's a program out there that works for most people all the time why not do that rather than just play around in the gym or or wear your black socks wear your black socks on the in the squat rack (laughs) that's right and uh use use barbells and you will be stronger in six weeks than you've ever been in your life well actually jared that's what true. you, what you just what you just said about like well and people say that all the time they're like oh well it, I, I mean you know it's better for people to like let's talk about firearms for a second it's better for people to go out i mean if they can't take a class and, and they can't find an instructor first of all if they can't find an instructor and they can't take a class they're full of shit but they're like what well, it's better for them to just go out and do something than nothing Okay, but how many people, how many of you are familiar with the the concept of ten thousand hours, right? To mastery, whatever it is, whether, you, whether you're Bruce Lee kicking a bag or whether you know you're Eddie Van Halen picking strings or whatever you are, you can't cheat the system. You you can't cheat the system. You can't shortcut the system. Uh, the system is the system, and if you develop bad habits or what I call, you know, we call in the training industry, training scars. If you, if you ingrain training scars into your, reg, you know, your, your, your program or your regimen, then it takes actually longer 
to undo the bad habits and the training scars than it would have to just have done it right from the beginning. Uh, that's why firearms instructors absolutely hate people when people say, well, before I go to a class, I need to practice. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't need to practice before you go to the class. Go to the class, and then when you leave the class, practice. All right, kids, I hope that you enjoyed the first half of the current Scott Hambrick interview. If it made you think, if it stimulated your brain, awesome. Now, the next part is that uh, tomorrow on the bonus hour, we're going to talk about baby hippos, precision rifles, and we'll have part two of our interview with our buddy Scott Hambrick. So if you enjoyed that and you want more and you want to talk about baby hippos, mm -hmm. then you should go to getsotg.com and sign up for the grad program and do that. And once you do that, then you will, you know, you'll be part of the goodness. You'll be part of the extended family. You'll get all the bonus stuff. So, there you go. It's getsotg.com. And also, the, what's it called? We got the, the all those classes that we keep. The, oh, there's just, yeah. there's infinitesimal bonus things in the, in the grab program. You, you, yeah. you definitely should be there. You definitely yeah. should be. It's, it's not just extra episodes, it's all kinds of great stuff. All kinds so, of great stuff. That's right. Yeah. If you want to get on all that, yeah, getsotg.com. We hope to see you there. And until then, remember, you are a beginner once but you are a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.